Welcome to this Budweiser eight uh, Budweiser nineteen thirty three repeal reserve Amber Lager release party. It's a celebration, fellas. Salute. All right. So anyway, just gonna stand up and adjust the shirt, and then adjust this cap. No particular reason. Make sure it's adjusted. <clears throat> and here we go. I have to say this to you. Dickie's beer, Re Dickie's beer reviews was the first video review for this amber lager in the world. Oh, what a pop. Oh, what smoke. 6.1% alcohol. Introduced in 2017. Beachwood aged. So we're pouring it. We're pouring it. You're seeing it live on the internet. <laughs> Justin, Justin, beer and barbecue. Oh, my goodness. Justin says, yay. And Flippo the Hippo says, sup. He's asking me, sup. Just chilling, drinking the bud. What's up? What's up? All right, so here we go. Oh, that's effervescent Wilson etched glass. I just have an Anheuser-Busch tasting glass. Happen to have that. There's a thick bone-colored head. A very amber appearance. That sounds like a guest coming to the party. Oh, Lance, I did not get to watch your Anheuser Bush video, but I shall intend to watch that. I've got it in my watch later. Look at no, no, that's to totally all right. I, I just joined this already in progress. I didn't know if you was on or not. Look at the amber appearance. Clear. Now, you know, haven't we sort of seen this already? Because, now let's check the ingredients. Uh, Beachwood aging process. Uh, light, hoppy, roasted malt aroma with a slightly sweet taste and a sharp, crisp finish. Uh, this is best before February. Oh, February 3rd, 2018. They do the best by dates now. They got rid of born on dates. Um, um, that's all it says. A little stubby bottle. Much like your natural ice stubby bottle, natural light stubby, stubby bottle in your Budweiser, but more like natural light. Well, somebody asked me, do they use adjuncts? I would assume they use water, barley malt, hops, and rice, right? Well, I'm assuming some like if some as far as that. They went through the traditional process as far as adjuncts. I have no idea. I'm going to taste it and see if I can tell. Bart Robinson says, I'm going to grab some tomorrow. Jay, happy Friday, my friend. Happy Friday to you. Flippo the Hippo says, damn, makes me want to drink some. Larry Bull says, can't find it in my area. I'm getting a little echo in your in Lance, but that's uh, – you'll find it soon enough. The beer, beer to Full Beer Review says they tint the high fructose corn syrup. Uh, no, they don't use any high fructose corn syrup in, in Budweiser. They use verdant rice, actually. But they use high fructose corn syrup and the Bud Light lime, which is dreadful. But really, when you get that sickening high fructose dryness, you know, that like you get in a Coca-Cola? Yeah. Bart Robinson, Bart Robinson says, my man Lance. Cheshire Homebrew says, looks good. Cheers from the United Kingdom. The beautiful says, never mind, they just use brown rice. Nah, they toast the malts. V Justin says, have a good night, everyone. I have Dungeons and Dragons to play. Uh-oh. Don't crash it. All right. Now, look at that nice lacing. Okay, you want the aroma, Lance? Oh, yeah. It's uh, like some of my 40-year-old and older viewers know, it's got that Roman meal bread crust. Now, I have a question. It's one of those ones where, like, the way they advertised it, 
You know it's a little on the dark side? Is it more of a prohibition beer or a little bit stronger? You know, people all say, oh, beer was stronger before prohibition. I don't know if that's true because um, if you read those pre-prohibition advertisements, they're not talking about the strength. Uh, but whatever the case, they found an old recipe. It could have been a special uh, amber lager that Adolphus Bush made for his friends, like they say, and then Prohibition kept him from mass marketing it. But this is only going to be around for a limited time. Probably by New Year's, it'll be gone by the Super Bowl. And I think that's a smart move, putting it out for a limited time and not hoping it's going to be the next big thing and then slowly die on the shelf, right? Okay. <laughs> Put it, out there, put it out there for a limited amount of time, let it flash in the pan, and then you move on to something else. Okay, totally understandable. Oh, now let's take a little walk back in time, shall we? Oh, let me finish uh, tasting this. It is hoppy now. It's got a good deal of um, floral bitterness. Mm. <clears throat> your straightforward beer bitterness, you know, your standard like macro hop bitterness. Um, it's got definite strong, bready, syrupy, brown bread notes. Uh, they probably use the rice adjunct. Um, the body's medium to high medium. It's got a little, you know, it's 6.1. So you now you're in the malt liquor area. Uh, even stronger than King Cobra malt liquor. Um, crisp finish, pretty crisp finish, but this beer kind of veers towards sweet now and bready. And, and I mean brown bread. So if, if you don't like brown bread and that glutinous syrupiness, you may not like it. I'm not saying it's a syrupy beer, but you know that that taste that you get in those rich brown breads. Um, but there's no off flavor, there's no butteriness, no um, no green apple, which I know green apple is acceptable and according to the style experts, it's not acceptable to me. Honestly, I never really want to drink a beer that tastes like green apple. If you, um, hey, you know this was seven dollars and forty nine cents a six pack. Uh, you know. Uh, I would recommend it. I mean, at least to buy it and try it. So buy it and try it. You just might like it. You might like it. You might not. Well, it seems like at, the, at that price point, a lot of people that I know of would balk. It's like that's right in the wheelhouse for like me and you, you know, for a six pack. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping it'd be more like six forty nine, but I went to Walmart. They didn't have it. I went to uh, Winn Dixie. They didn't have it. So I bought it. I went back to my and bought it. Now you might be saying, "Oh, you're just trying to save money. You're just being a cheapskate and shopping, cheapskate and shopping around." I do shop around because um, Benjamin Franklin said, "A penny saved is a penny earned." Well, you know, what it comes to things so like if they don't have it, I mean, if they don't have it. They they just don't have it, you know. Yeah. Well, it's a nice looking label. Uh, I got the six pack. I'll go get it to show you, and then we'll take a little walk down memory lane during this party. All righty. Well, Lush fans, um, Ronald Therio stepped out of the room for a moment. Now, um, I'm actually cooking dinner right now, so it's one of those ones where, like, I might step away for a few minutes. <laughs> What's that hot sauce you got? That is this. That is this. And what is this? That is um, Zatarain's Cajun, Cajun hot sauce. Oh, they originated in Louisiana. This, uh, this is a nice head of foam, boy. It's very much like a mousse. Look at that. It's like moussey, like a uh, chocolate mousse. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Now I see it. Now look at this foil six-pack wrapper. It's sort of like a, a Christmas, that Christmas wrap foil. And then it's got a newspaper, Prohibition Ends at Last, the Daily Chronicle. And then there's a bunch of talk about blah, 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 you know. Prohibition. People can read that on their own. Now, the hot sauce, is it good? I expect that it is. I mean, okay, let me say this. It's all right. 
I mean, it's I mean, it's good, but it's not great. If that makes any sense. Yes. Now, maybe because like I'm I'm used to the super hot sauce, but the also problems I've had in the last couple of years, it's restricted me yeah. to what I can have. And excuse me, this is probably the hottest thing I've had in a while, but it's very good. How does it? Now wait, you said it was all right. Now you're saying it's very good. How does it uh, do against, say, like uh, uh, Tabasco? It depends on the food itself. Like this here, this is more mellow for certain foods. For actual Tabasco, you expect to be hot. That makes sense. The Tabasco is like vinegary, you know. And what about, you ever had crystal hot sauce? I guess I have. Okay. Because you could deal with this, or you can deal with that. Or you could deal with this, or you can deal with that. All right. Sorry, people, it's a party. So now, uh, it's a release party, you understand? Let's take a little trip back in time to 1995. The Republican Party had just taken over Congress in mid-year elections. We had the terrible tragedy at Oklahoma City The Pittsburgh Steelers were heading to the Super Bowl for the 95 NFL season, and Red Wolf was on the shelf. Oh, snap. Red Wolf. And Amber Lager from none other than Anheuser-Busch. Well, 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 what do you know? And it was 5.5% alcohol, so elevated alcohol. And this beer, which I used to drink pretty regularly, went like this, and it died out, and nobody bought it, so I got discontinued. You know, I wasn't drinking that point. Well, not drinking regular that point. Let me rephrase that, but, like, I remember seeing it on the shelf back then. Let's read a few. Yeah, it was there. Let's read a few comments. Uh, Arkansas Beer Reviews, Marvin says, head, head is definitely sticking around. Yeah, the head is sticking around. Uh, Cheshire Homebrew says, hi, Ronald. I would love to know your favorite English beer. Oh, my favorite English beer? Um, let me think about that for about 10 to 12 seconds. Um, oh, might be Samuel Smith's Yorkshire Stingo. Samuel Smith's Yorkshire Stingo might do the trick. That's a fantastic, fabulous product. Uh, the Beautiful says, Crystal's for the win. Yeah, and guess what I got in my, guess what I've got? I've got some Trappies hot sauce yet to be open, and I'm right now using Louisiana brand hot sauce from Bruce Foods of New Iberia, Louisiana. Oh, what a beauty. Ch Tyler Mansell says, I'm late. Hey, Ron. Or the Taddy Porter. Oh yeah, the Taddy Porter is dynamite, and so is the Samuel Smith's Imperial and, and Samuel Smith's Imperial Stout, and the Samuel Smith's Oatmeal Stout, and all that. Now, um, you notice I haven't given a rating yet. I'm about to. I had it in the freezer, nice and cold, because you know they just come in to the store. They just came in today. I, I, I saw this delivery man, and I looked, and I said, oh, well. Now, let's go back to 1996, the winter of 1996 heading into 97. Here is Anheuser-Busch's winter 1996 limited edition. Oh, limited edition special beer. And what was that? An amber lager. Now look what it says. I'm proud to continue the Anheuser-Busch tradition of brewing special beers for the holidays. This year, begun in the 1890s, this year's recipe for special winter brew produces a rich flavorful lager that's perfect for all the celebrations of the season. Man, I'm telling you right now, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I was enjoying this beer. And then for 1997, I said, let me get it for the next year. And it never showed up again. 
that's the Bush family for you. You know, they did some strange stuff. So like, well, of course, like they were in process of starting to sell. So that's a, that was a problem. Yeah, right there. Didn't sell to 2008. That was this was born. The born on date October 29th, 1996. But uh, it's strange, you know. I thought this beer was like comparable to many craft beers, and you know, even in the mid 90s, Anheuser Busch had their own craft beer line. Yeah. They had their own craft beer line. I have the whole list down there. It was a whole bunch of stuff, but I never saw it in the store except for this one. Now, let's go back just a few short years ago. A few short years ago, Bush Signature Company got five point nine, five point seven percent alcohol. Sold initially only in the Midwestern states. Now, I wrote an email to Anheuser-Busch InBev, and I said, when is this beer coming to Louisiana? And they told me it is not coming to Louisiana. It's only going to be sold in Iowa, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, those those states. I said, well, that's, pit that's pitiful because I would do video reviews and I would drink it. And then, lo and behold, very soon it showed up down here. It was sometimes you got to just make the phone call. That's as simple as that, you know? Right. I told him, I said, Louisiana Beer Reviews demands this beer to show up, and then it showed up. But, um, <laughs> and then it died out. Last year, 2016, it went the way of the dodo bird. It's sad because those are three really good beers I just showed you, and they went nowhere fast. And maybe they got wise, and they decided, let's just put them out as a temporary thing. Like that Lou Reed, like that Lou Reed song, "Temporary Thing." All right, it was like it was like, um, re it was like regional cereals. There, like what you're saying, you only see it like once or twice a year, and that's it. Yeah, maybe once, forever. Put it out, make a few bucks, and move on. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe that's their new uh, way of doing it because you you did the the video, and I know what your video is about that wash that New York Post article, and um, then you. Instead of just seeing something decline, decline, and be all depressed about it, put something out, let people enjoy it, and then you might create some interest, you know, like, oh, what's the next new thing coming from them? Because isn't that the whole craft beer scene today? Oh, 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 yeah, it's like, there's so many gimmicks, I just can't keep up. Okay, let me stop. Okay, let me rephrase that statement. I refuse to be part of that game. I'm like, I'm not for gimmicks. I want body. I want flavor. I want a story. It's one of those ones where I'm maybe I'm old school in the game. Maybe this is me. And this one has the body. This one has the flavor. This one has the quality. And I'm going to rate it. Get ready, folks. Oh, Cheshire says I'm drinking a Robinson's Old Tom clone, and it's fantastic. Oh, I love that Old Tom with the cat on there. Meow. All right. That's a good one. 8%. Now, Louisiana Beer Reviews will rate this beer, and I'm not wearing Major League Baseball apparel today. I'm going to rate this beer, and I'm going to be conservative, but I could be tempted to go hard. But I'm going to say a 90, 91, 90 or 91, A minus. That's the minimum. The lowest I could give it and feel comfortable would be a 90. It's that good. This company knows what they're doing when they put their mind to it. <clears throat> now, if I can get an A beer, an excellent beer for seven forty nine a six pack, I am happy. No, I totally understand that. It's like, especially from them, it's one of those ones to where, I mean, you don't, you're not really doing a review review on this one, like yes. right now. Yes, I like, am. But it's one of those ones where, like, if you feel that confident, I'm confident. I mean, like, we don't have that in our area right now. We don't because I haven't seen it yet. This was a review embedded within a release party. Oh, gotcha. Now, it, I noticed one interesting little fact here. Nowhere on the bottle does it say the word beer. And I think we know why that is. What well, says amber or something like that on it? As you know, it is highly illegal to sell beer above five percent alcohol Correct. Correct. You sell lager 
at any any level. Uh -oh. I got a person from New Orleans calling me right now. Cartwright. Hello, Cartwright. I'm all right. What's up? Oh, I'll go. Hold on, this is big. Okay. Um, man, I really appreciate that. And, uh, oh, yeah, I know where to park. I'll use it, or I'll just park on the street and walk. Hey, well, uh, why are you not going anymore? Uh, yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. Well, I gotta get going because I'm, I'm doing a hangout with somebody on a, on another line. But um, but are you? Uh, so you're gonna have it on your? You're gonna have it down by your, on your porch? I'll come in the morning about ten o'clock, ten thirty. Sunday, yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. All right, bye-bye. Well, I have even more shocking news. First, I got to run and get the beer as we close this out. I just got a call from a friend. He doesn't want to go to the Saints games anymore because of the uh, the problem with the an National Anthem and un Unpatriotic Football League. So he wants me to take his ticket, his 300, I'm sorry, his $298 ticket with free parking pass for free to go to the game Sunday against uh the bears <laughs> i'll take a free ticket I'm not, I'm not gonna lie i'll take a free ticket this party is turning into a big party like, even they lose like i'll go like you say i'll go party you know wow of course i can't say anything up here up here in northeast ohio the browns fans they couldn't give a they can give away a ticket for seven bucks last week i know that Lush fans, do you like to go to NFL games? A $298 ticket with a free parking pass for free, and all you got to do is go to the person's house and pick it up? My answer is I like to do that. No, us here in Akron is, like, way too cheap, you know? So I am going to go to an unpatriotic football league game. <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, but – um, I like to watch people alienate their own customers and destroy their own – product but anyway you know it's like the whole bizarro world uh format to go watch yeah but like hopefully the superdome tomorrow will be like they'll be they'll be somewhat packed and it's like hopefully there's like thirty thousand people there and it's like a mausoleum you know oh it'll be packed sunday because it's the bears no i don't know you know a lot of people are really angry about the uh, whole national anthem thing but my friend told me this and i don't know if this is true i didn't check my friend paul said uh you know, the, the players never came out on the field for the anthem until 2009. And he said the NFL made a contract with the United States Department of Defense to have all the players come out as like a promotion for the military. And they got paid to do it. It was like a paid advertisement for the military. I said, well, that sounds bizarre, but I never heard about that. But it, I guess it could be true. I have no idea. But... uh People might ask me, have you lost respect for the NFL players since this incident has been going on? My answer was no, because I didn't really have respect for them before that. <laughs> so it would be it would be it would be hypocritical for me to say I lost respect when I didn't really have it in the first place. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of respect for the last 25, 30 years anyway. So um, I just watched it because it was on TV. It didn't cost any money. And I just would lay there and watch it or sit there and watch it. Sometimes I would turn the sound down and just play video reviews, like beer reviews, and listen to the beer reviews while I watch that stuff. No, I, I've done that too, so I'm, I'm just as guilty. <laughs> so let's, I'm gonna read a few more comments, Lance. I know you gotta start your channel up in 30 minutes. Yeah, uh, I, I, I gotta eat, I, I got dinner get, actually done, so I gotta eat something first so I start this, I start my general, general chat. Okay, and uh, 
I'll join it if you'd like uh, later. Maybe I'll get a chance to join it. It says uh, if you want me to. Oh, no, 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 no. You're more welcome to join. In 30 seconds, I'm going to read these comments. Thanks, Ronald. A lot of the pubs over here refuse to sell Old Town by the pint. All right, bye. Um, Travis Harper says it's 6.1, so that's why I don't have the word beer anywhere. And surprised they don't say ale either. Right. Now, it might say ale in Texas in some bottles. John Mulk Karen says, I am from Pennsylvania. Yingling is my hometown beer. Well, I believe that. And I wish I could get the Yingling old, uh, old Chesterfield ale down here. Chester says only half pints. Uh, cheers, mate. Cheers. Who that says the beautiful. What's the other dude's channel? It's Lance. and it's Lance, you, you take this and then we're going to shut it down. Your channel. Go promo. Oh, he left. <laughs> you left before you could promo your channel, man. It's Lance Delush, okay? Just type it in on YouTube, Lance Delush, and you'll see his channel. He's about to do a live broadcast in 30 minutes. All right, thanks, folks. You take care. Thanks for joining our 30-minute Anheuser-Busch 1933 uh, Prohibition Repeal Reserve release party. Remember, A-minus, A-minus.